Kosovo. Salamla. The floor is yours. Uh, dear President, thank you. Um, I uh, promised myself I would not bring myself to this level of discussion, but unfortunately when I hear my um, Serbian colleagues, not only during this debate, but in other debates, I cannot not go to uh, this point of what I want to discuss. Um, you see, um, 25 years ago as a 13-year-old, I survived a massacre uh, from the Serbian army, um, which was then led by um, men who actually are uh, leading the country now and were part of that regime. As a 13-year-old, I was left in a pile of bodies of my family with 16 bullets. And I, today, I hold these marks in my arm and other parts of my body. Um, and to see 25 years after where we continuously getting attacked verbally and in other means recently with a terror attack in Kosovo, it's unacceptable. And enough is enough. There's never been an apology. There's never been anything taken into bringing justice, not only what happened then, but even now. The men that carried out the terror attack are in Serbia and they are not being tried and they're not being extradited to Kosovo to face uh, justice. So for me, it's very clear what is happening. We've done everything that we can as a country, as institutions, to be able to build a better living for all of our citizens in Kosovo, including all of our minorities. And actually we call them communities. These are national communities, not even minorities. That's not how we refer to them. Uh, we have a constitution and we have laws in place uh, to make sure that they're fully integrated and fully engaged in, in um, our society. There's reserved seats in our parliament for uh, the Serbian community specifically and also for other communities to make sure that they are represented. And we've been working through this to make sure that yeah, we do build peace. And yeah, we do create a better future for our young people. I'm a mother now, I have a son, and I don't want my child to grow up with this kind of language and also to think that in the future there could be a possibility for another war and to go through the same thing to what I went through and other people went through. That's unacceptable and it's actually shameful. It really is shameful. And another thing that I want to, uh, to mention here, which I think is really, really important in the discussion that's been happening in relation to what has happened in the north of Kosovo, we're not talking about the Serbian community. I don't think the Serbian community should be placed in that negative light in that part of the country, because it's not them doing this. It's organized criminalized groups, paramilitary groups, directly linked to the president of uh, Serbia, Vucic. They've been causing these troubles in the north, not the Serbian community. They're stuck in the middle of this. So that has to be clear. And trust me, anyone that wants to find out all these information and all these facts, you can. It's all there. So, I, yes, it's important that we have dialogue. And it's important that we move forward. But it takes two parties to be able to do that. We've done everything that we can in our power to do that. But unless Serbia accepts the fact that Kosovo is an independent state, and we need to move forward from that, acknowledge all the crimes that have been committed, and at least have an apology, if nothing else, and, but also leave the country alone to be able to move forward no. and to provide for its citizens, regardless of Saranda. what their ethnic background Saranda. is. Saranda. Sorry, I apologize. I just realized the time. Thank you. Thank you, Saranda. Um